leaving Romania took about uh, three seconds, now to Moldova. That was about a 10 minute process to cross into Moldova from Romania. Uh, this is our third visit to Moldova. And uh, when I think of Moldova, I think of you know poverty, uh, not too many tourists. It's one of the least visited countries in the world. Um, I think of wine, I think of Turks who practice Christianity. Um, I think of USSR, all the Soviet architecture, which is what I'm gonna focus on here, that and wine. Uh, what do you think of when you think of Moldova? You, you've been with me all the time. I think a funny accent. Funny accent? Yeah. What does that mean? They speak funny. Like in when they speak Romanian? Yeah, they have a special accent, a Moldovan accent. Mm. Uh, I think of Divin, which is uh, Moldovan Konyak. I think uh, yeah, poverty. Female president. Female president. Okay. Uh, chocolate. Chocolate. Done. It's a mosaic. There's a communist border sign. Welcome, Valesht. So, uh, here's the first Soviet mosaic of the day. I was gonna drive by it, but I can't. I just can't. Perfect boobs. Let's look at the other side. That's uh, like a floral arrangement. And uh, yeah, it was a rayon marker. You can read it clearly here. There's the older one. Bianca got excited because uh, the name of this village, translated English, is beautiful. Russia began their invasion of Ukraine last week, and I was thinking this might be our last chance to visit Moldova again before Putin tries to take it back. And that's why we're here now. Uh, the plan is to stay for two or three weeks or leave earlier if fighting starts, but uh, mostly just drive around and see seven or eight cities. Today, we're driving to Baltz. Baltz, it's the second largest city in Moldova. Growing up. And we just entered Baltz. Here's another Soviet mosaic. You know, it's it's good it's winter time because if the leaves were out, you wouldn't get this view. Another one, a couple minutes up the road. That's some uh, great pipage on the right. Oh, it goes right back into the ground there. There, the pipes pop up again. Got a puke? No. All right, so this is a library and uh, you have some Soviet elements up here. Here's some socialist modernism, including the residential tower behind it. It's about 14 stories. I love this facade. I don't know, do I spot Lenin here? 
Is it Marks? Who is this? Oh, it's Len. Oh, it's just, oh, that's Lennon for sure. Here's the city fountain. And I do spot, I do spot uh, Lennon on top of this building. We asked all the old men hanging around that building who the other guys were next to Lenin, and they didn't know. They just said communist history. Here's the National Theater of Baltz. Uh, Vasile, that's a Romanian name. Now you know how to say, I love Baltz in Romanian. This is not EU loves Baltz. You is I in Romanian. That's what I've been taught anyway. An Eternal Flame by a Soviet tank. You can see the red star there. Central Market, where, where all the action is. I love these city streets, the Baltz city streets. Who was it that says you could tell how corrupt a country is by looking at their roads? And here it is, the main bus station of the second largest city in Moldova. Something Soviet. More scenes from the bus station. Some more pipage. The pipage is all over the city. It's elevated pipes. Just rise out of the ground, plumb it back into the ground, wrap around houses. That's Lennon. You see Lennon? I missed it. It's not just Lennon, there's a mosaic underneath him as well. Look at these potted pines. So those were all scenes from the outside of the Devin distillery. So we are right here in this building, and this is the size of the, uh, the complex since 1944. Belts 7, 9, Speranza 10, 15, Prasnichny, 20, 30, 3. The night of throwing up, all day throwing up, did not convince Bianca we should not buy a bottle of Rakiu and a bottle of Divin. And we'll have dinner here. Good morning from Baltz. You know, until the Ottoman Empire gave Moldova to Russia in 1812, uh, Moldova was under the Turks for, what, 200, 300 years, 350 years? Look it up. Anyway, you, you, get, you get a decent amount of Turkish food in Moldova. This is uh, Menemen for breakfast. Yesterday was Kufte for dinner. Who is this guy from the 1400s? He's Stefan Celmare. He was a voyevod of Moldova. What does Stefan Celmare mean? Uh, Stefan the Great. Stephen the Great. And he's a saint. He's also a saint. Every he's like time, king of Moldova. Yeah, every time he fought against the Ottoman and won, he made a monastery. Oh, monastery. Monument to the Holocaust.
There's a monument, multiple hammers, multiple sickles. And uh, the people up here are uh, were citizens of Baltz, uh, somehow related to Soviet Union, maybe uh, soldiers. I see a priest up there. Uh, there's a weightlifting champion. So we're on our way out of Baltz. We'll stop at any mosaics we see on the way out. Baltz, by the way, means uh, puddle in Romanian. I don't know if I mentioned that before. Do you know why? Uh, I forgot. So this is a mosaic of a woman in a traditional Moldovan dress, I guess. We've been passing a lot of uh, richly decorated Soviet-era bus stops, and uh, this isn't the best one I've seen, but uh, it'll give you an idea of what we've been looking at. It looks like the Ukrainian flag. Trifanesht. Oh, look, it looks like this is another well here. We've been passing lots of wells. I'm going to stop at this one and just take a closer look. There are wells in every village we've passed so far. Same village, there's another well on the right. And another larger well. Yet another well. And another one, I see two. Another well. Entering another village called Frumashika, which means beautiful. How many wells did we just count in five minutes? 34. 34 wells. Uh, I wonder if there's running water in these parts. This town is called Izvore, which uh, we think might mean spring water. Welcome to Soroka, where we're gonna stay for the evening. Candle of Gratitude. It was built in 2004 as a monument in memory of all of the monuments in Moldova that have been destroyed in the past. So across this river is Ukraine. I don't see any Russians yet. On the left is Moldova and now we're looking at Ukraine. Look, proof we're in wine country. What does this say over here, Beloga? In the memory of the 6,000 people that were killed in the forest next to the village Kosauts, may their rest be easy. Stone with a bust. The cemetery is not being particularly cared for. Uh, walking through thorns here. forgotten stones. Heading now to a neighborhood in uh, Soroka called Gypsy Hill, where a number of Roma have built large palaces uh, resembling, apparently, uh, famous places throughout the world. Let's see if we can find some of them.
So this is the border crossing between Moldova and Ukraine. Hotel for the evening. Look at this romantic picture over the bed. 3D. Good morning from Soroka. That's Ukraine across the Dniester River, as seen from our well appointed hotel room. Donations from the locals for the Ukrainian refugees. One look back at Soroka and it's onward to Orhe. Here's a better example of the kind of bus stops you've been seeing. All Soviet mosaic top. Per the communist border signs, we are entering Florestrian and we just left. Hello, Cherubko. Is that right? Cherubko. 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 And goodbye, Cherubko. Cherubko. We just had a couple mile stretch of nice road, you know, like normal road. No potholes, smooth, you know, paved properly. Bianca even commented like, wow, what a, what a nice road. It's just a normal road. And then we just passed the sign. You know, road rehabilitated by America. Now we're back on Moldovan road. Potholes and ripples and just shit, general shit. So that was the road to the largest secret Soviet site, which we're walking to now. It's uh, Object 1180. It's an, uh, an anti-nuclear bunker. And the Soviet Union built it in response to Germany's accession to NATO. And Russia never likes it when uh, countries join NATO, do they? It's 11 floors deep. It was built from 1985, and I don't think it was ever finished. The first six floors are flooded, always, and uh, layered with ice, even in the summertime. You can see my car there in the background. It's uh, like I feel like I'm in, sleep, in a pretty place. I feel like this was already a bomb, a nuclear bomb. It feels secret still. You going in, Beloga? Yeah. <laughs> For the first time in my life, I wish I had a selfie stick so I could extend my arm out enough so we could see how uh, deep this thing is without slipping on the snow, falling to our death. Yeah, that is slippery, but... Yeah, so. Booyah. That's... Oh look, these are, these are um, like ventilation shafts or something to go down.
these guys go down to the next floor. And there's another set below that, to the floor below, etc. So what do you think? Safe from a nuclear attack. This is where we're gonna run to. Okay, that's a wrap. I can ride my bike with no handlebars, no handlebars, no. We're driving toward Transnistria right now. It's a place we visited a couple years ago, last time we were in Moldova. Transnistria is a breakaway state. It's not recognized by any other country, but de facto, it is another country. Uh, they have their own post office, their own military, their own uh, currency, car registration. Um, Moldova says it belongs to them, and Transnistria says, no, we're independent. Uh, it's been a ceasefire for something like 30 years now. Actually, the 30th anniversary, I think, was March 3rd or March 2nd, a couple days ago. Anyway, what happened with Transnistria was amidst the disintegration of the Soviet Union in 1990, Transnistria essentially became Transnistria SSR. The idea was that if Moldova declared independence from Soviet Union or if they reunioned with Romania, Transnistria would remain within the Soviet Union. So Moldova did declare independence in uh, 1991. And uh, Transnistria said, no, we don't want to be a part of you, Moldova. And Moldova said, you are a part of us. And uh, Transnistria said, no. And Russia said, hey, we support the Transnistrians. And uh, a battle broke out in 1992. It lasted a couple months. And now there's a ceasefire. Neither party uh, really recognizing um, the same thing. Russia backs Transnistria, and Russia has peacekeepers there right now, so we're not going to go there. We're in the middle of the Russian invasion of Ukraine, and uh, but we'll take a look at it across the Dniester River, which is the natural boundary between Moldova and Transnistria. There it is. That's Transnistria. Those big buildings out there, that's Transnistria as well. Eternal glory to the heroes who died for the liberation of uh, Rosina, the Great War, 1941-1945. And this used to be an eternal flame. This is a Moldovan SSR tank from back in World War II days. So in 1944, this village and uh, nearby villages raised funds for the purchase of tanks. And those tanks became part of a column that ended up liberating the Eastern European cities. Nearly uh, whizzed by this abandoned building until I noticed this. Details they had on this thing. Yeah, let's look inside. <laughs> what do you see over there? Um, oh, it's pretty big. It's Where are we? What do you think this was? I don't know, maybe some sort of factory. Yeah, factory. It's raining in there. <laughs> All the melting snow. Jorge, home sweet home. Well, we're 
we're staying at the winery, so we might as well taste one of each. Pretty cool late show. Four or five years, not more. So that's why in the first cycle we Probably, first of all, you will feel that uh, really high acidity. In case if you are used to drink something, after that uh, you will analyze the viral mass. Chicken Mama Liga Stew. Good morning from Orge, Chateau Bartele. We're supposed to be in Chisinau and uh, couldn't find any rooms due to the influx of Ukrainian refugees. So I ended up staying here the night for like a hundred bucks. Wanted to go to Chisinau today, couldn't find rooms. So we're gonna go to a place called Glodeni. Um, don't know anything about it. Just gonna get in the road and uh, see what happens. That's what a hundred bucks gets you in order, hey? I think this will be our one and only stop in Orge. It's the Palace of Culture. This one's on the left side. What was up with Soviets and nipples? Monument to unknown heroes. See the Soviet star on his belt. Or maybe it's for uh, World War One. And this perhaps was an eternal flame. So this is a World War II monument in the village of Bahmut. It almost looks like a, a gravesite here. Imagine this is your village and these are your roads. You see that ball over there on the left on top of the mountain? Should we go there? Yeah. All right. Listen to this echo. I'm going to close the door. Listen to this. Well, the fact that this is abandoned 
um, must make it Soviet, right? Maybe this is some kind of um, radio station, like an air defense radio station, or uh, do you think it's a meteorological? It's not an observation. I mean, do you think a telescope was up there or something? It's not an observatory. Wow, I can talk in this forever. this Take a ride with a hell of a guy ground control to major Tom hello Perita At the top, it says uh, in Russian, people remember at what price happiness was won. This was just going to be a drive-by, but uh, I just spotted the hammer and sickle up here by the, by the lady's face. The star behind me says something like, the graves of the dead for the homeland. Well, again, fleshed, old friend. I think these elevated platforms are for people to park their broken down car on and work on it from underneath. Operation Noah, founded 1899. Operation Vecca, old Operation. 1548, much older. Freshly painted, colors of the Moldovan flag. Down here are uh, Russian names, presumably war dead. You can run, but you can't hide. So that was uh, that was five and a half hours driving today. Behind me is the monument to unknown heroes, another monument for unknown heroes in Gloden. Uh, this town's going to be home for two nights because the rest of Moldova is fully booked. And this used to be an eternal flame, no doubt. So it's a World War II monument. I know that from the 1941, 1945 on the top. Back in Pipe Town. All right, what Moldovan dish am I about to eat here? This is Tigaya Butoyash. It's um, tokanitsa de legume with chicken, with potatoes, ro roasted potatoes with garlic, and some sheep cheese. Thank you. Well, this is what 33 bucks gets you in a village you never heard of in Moldova. And here's the path driven so far. Good morning from Gloden. We're going to stay in town, just drive around. Uh, heard there might be some bison. I saw on the map a bison reserve, so maybe see if they want to come out and play. The main square of Glodenia. There's a uh, city hall, police building, palace of culture. This Eiffel Tower replica puts the emphasis on culture in palace of culture. And this is the side of the police building. You can see some remnants of uh, Soviet ladies. Police building flies the Moldovan flag, the European flag against the uh, backdrop 
of the hammer sickle. And this is the district council building. Glodden City Hall. The whole town's come out to buy flowers for their women. March 8th is coming, International Women's Day. Soviet mosaic. What are we getting? Uh, cabbage pie, 1875. Yeah, the last time I saw a European bison uh, was a few years ago in Belarus, near the border with Poland, Europe's last primeval forest. They have uh, the European bison there. European bison are a little smaller than their American cousins. And um, what forest are we going to now? It means uh, Royal Forest, yeah. and it's right on the border with Romania along the uh, Prut River. I think it was the Prut River. Yeah. Well, we've just entered the Royal Forest. What a lovely collection of toilets. Hello, tiny bison. Hi, baby. You want me to know? You look like a fool. <laughs> look. Clean yourself. Yeah. So anyway, that's what I said to her. It's not a swan. It's a duck. <laughs> What's going on here soon, right? All of you are expecting something to happen. Oh, what a great day. You want to drive up to Romania? Yeah. Uh, border protection strip. I wonder if we just uh, walk the rest of the way. And there is Romania. Does it look like home? About 20 minutes from where we just were, the border with Romania, is something called uh, Nature Reserve of a Hundred Hills. Uh, well, it said it in Romanian, which was... Uh, Reservația Naturală Suta de Mobile. Let's see it. Local legend has it that uh, this was the site of some ancient bloody wars and all of these hills are uh, burial mills. Average road in Moldova. Don't be afraid. <laughs> oh, God. Well, here's a decent one of those hundred hills. Crossing back into Glodeni district. We have a surprise for you. Come, baby, come. You're so good at standing up. Look at you. Yeah, what balance? What balance? Slow. You like, that? You like that, buddy? No. Hey, slow down. Slow down. Hey, relax, relax. It's going to be it. You hear the shrieking in the background? This is how Moldovans sing. I shit you not. Romanians do something so. Yes, 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 that's what I'm talking about. Yes, uh, Caesar would want to sing. <laughs> this dessert is called Baba Niegra. It means uh, old black lady. It's a Moldovan classic. <laughs> 